good to have you join us again on Core Digest. Let's look towards uh, infrastructural development matters arising. Just yesterday, the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatini Fashola, uh, in Lagos, Ikordu specifically, did uh, flag off the construction of the 36 kilometer Ikorodu Shagamu Expressway or College Road, which is to ease uh, traffic and stress from the Lagos, ever busy Lagos Ibadan Expressway, and uh, help the people get uh, better. Well, speaking, it's okay, this is not a, a political project, it's not to score a political point, but it's something that would benefit the people. So let's see, how much are we faring, or how well are we faring with regards to infrastructure because this is the bedrock of whatever form of development we might be looking at as a people. I have with me in the studio this morning Chide Domobioha, a social commentator, and Chide Ologun, a legal practitioner and PR expert. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. Yeah, good morning once again. Okay. Business owners, uh, entrepreneurs, big organizations, everyone keeps talking about the need for infrastructure development as this is what would make their businesses easy and to thrive. How do you say we're faring at this time? My position has been um, if you remove corruption, Nigeria will do well in providing infrastructure for the country. But corruption has eaten so deep that uh, money made for uh, the down uh, project, projects are being diverted. If I may ask a question before you continue with that line of thought, is there any country in the world that doesn't have this issue of corruption? Is it peculiar to Nigeria? No, uh, you see, to answer your question, that those people try as much as possible to put strong infrastructure to curtail it. Not that it's completely ruled out. There are corruptions there and there. But then Nigeria, we are wicked. Because maybe because we are black, our heart is black, everything about us is black. Oh, we my, my heart is in black. I'm just telling you, <laughs> God said it, every purpose of mine is very wicked. So back to what you are saying. Like, how many times will a contract be awarded for second Niger bridge? How far has that gone? I travel a lot, but next week I also travel. And I've been asking questions each time I pass through from uh, Asaba through Head Bridge. I continue to ask, where is the Second Niger Bridge? They will point very far, very, very far. I don't know, so that I will not uh, be caught um, saying what I don't know, but I have not seen it. Too. Last time the president himself said 40% near com completion. The Minister of it, I mean, uh, um, uh, my son, no, um, power, power said near completion, but we have not seen it. Let's believe and that. And because haven't been there, you for one haven't been there. If Let it me is, people is, who will stay around there, who fly that road. No, I fly the road now. I'll be there. Yeah, but how come you've not seen it? I've not seen it. Because if each time we pass through there, we ask the point very clear. He said it's still the same thing. It, remember, I mean, uh, um, the former, the first, not first, of passenger did the land breaking when the other governor that was booted from Anambra. Um, Andrewba, they did the land breaking. Then Jonathan came and spent billions of naira. Then we didn't see it. And this book came there was then come to um, Bini Ure Road. Like I said, from Bini to Onisha, you can drive with your two eyes closed, except Bini bypass. Except Bini bypass that the trailers are taking over the Bini bypass. I stand to be corrected. Anybody can fault me. Because I passed through there. Now, coming to Lagos, about the express road, if these rules are completed, transporters will be able to transport their produce very effectively and smoothly. And they will be cheaper. You see, the, 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 the problem we have now, is that most of the product, well, most of the goods that are supposed to go by rail, now go on the road. On the road. So that's why we have problem. If our infrastructure is put in place, we'll be able to experience good economy. So how would you say we're faring at the moment regarding infrastructure? Yeah, I, can, I, I, I can say, and yeah, what's yeah, yeah, I cannot say it, it will be bad of me, it will be very, very bad of me to say they've not tried. 
the both the previous one and this present one, they are trying. But let their effort be more more, more serious. Let us see it. Albert Sologun, please. Infrastructure development in Nigeria. Where are we? Where do we hope to be, or should we hope to be? You know, I think I'll speak constitutionally, then bring it to the society and benchmark with the global experience. If you look at Chapter 2 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, it emphasizes the fact that the welfare of the people shall be the primary concern of the government. What do we refer to as infrastructure? The supportive amenities needed to live well, to prosper in a society. Let's start from the health sector. I think around November 2017, the first lady cried out that the Azul Villa Clinic did not have a syringe. Neither was the uh, x-ray machine Work. working. And you know how much is budgeted for that clinic. And almost nine months thereafter, our president or thereabouts needed to still go to the UK for medical attention. That's infrastructure in the health sector. What about if the UK has failed over the years to develop their own sector? What about if the health workforce were to be on strike? Now, talk about roads. A German was so proud with about eight links in Germany and go to the US and saw 12 lanes of roads. You know, when I go to the US, I love to move by road. You set out from Baltimore, you are going to Connecticut, a journey of about eight hours. You'll be glad you are on air. <laughs> but I think we are yet to come to the revelation that the blessings of God are for man. And that what is good for A is good for Z. Because I keep wondering, and I have to ask this question, why should a leader be comfortable in the state house with automatic generators and the people are suffering? I was doing a study on India. I think India just completed rural electrification recently. You know, in the U.S., there are 50 states, and you can boast of 24-7 power supply. What do we have? Nigeria, we supply electricity to the Nigerian Republic and Benin Republic, and yet our industries are collapsing. So let's go to education. Education. What is the state of education in Nigeria? Nigeria that used to be the cream de la cream. In the academic, in fact, our children, our graduates excel abroad till now. Do you know how many schools have been shut in the northern part of the country? Do you know how? I mean, so when you look at all this, you ask a question Are we really a serious country? So if you ask, talk about the railway lines, like you mentioned now, when the Britons came to colonize us, they had economic interests that became translated to political interest. They started the rail system to connect our resources. As we speak now, uh, in April 2017 or there about, Honorable Fire, Dr. Fayemi got about $150 million grant from the World Bank for intervention in the mine sector. What is the state of Ajakuta uh, still rolling mill and what is going on in our mining sector? The NNPC we have in Nigeria was established in 1977. As, as we speak now, about 1.4 trillion naira was allegedly you know, consumed by fuel subsidy in this country. And Texas, that is just a state in the US, has about 27 functioning refineries. So what are we talking about? Infrastructure, and you can graduate the, what of electricity? What of electricity? What I spend by the grace of God on generator and fuel, I can use it to employ workers. This is so. When I see Nigerians arguing and shifting blames, if a government did not do well, that is why that government is taken out of place so that you come and do well. 
But in Nigeria, we just should be. We are suffering in Nigeria. But I, I will suffering in living. Nigeria. We're not living. I get to the U.S. I come back to Nigeria out of pure patriotism and the fact that this is my country. I love my country. You see, so these are the if our leaders can just sit back and remove that I better pass my devil mentality. You are on the road because you have your old lady that we play the road. You don't care whether people are held road. down. They don't go by road. Look at the ports we have in Nigeria. How functional are they? So, so when you look at all this, my sister, you are you you, you may almost conclude that um, we are yet to wake up from our slump. Here, pensioners are weeping, slumping, dying. dying. That is why dying. I'm 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 bothered that somebody dying. slumps in court. Fine. I'm emotional, I'm human, but I can differentiate between drama and reality. People serve this country, they don't have access to their pensions, they suffer, and do you know what? They cost the nation, whether directly or indirectly, mm -hmm. because we bring such pain over them. America takes care of the unborn, they plan for them, takes care of the infants, takes care of the young, the working age, those who don't have work, they have social security system, take care of the agent. And I mean, so when you look at all this, I think we need to come to the point where we probably go and study the essence of good governance and that everything that God has created is for the benefit of man. I, I, I'm, I'm amazed when I hear people saying, I love my Jeep. Love is not for material things. Love is for human beings. So if you care for human beings, you enable the environment so that prosperity can manifest. So let's and look at how we can change this narrative seeing the bad things are wrong you even say we're sleeping so how do we rouse ourselves from sleep we have to start by ourselves the president when he came on board he said change will start from change me. begins with me from me um until we come to our senses to know that when you are there it's for service service if you are elected or appointed for any position, it's for service. And uh, no condition is permanent. Like he said, how many of these people will go by road? How many of them? How many of them go to Nigerian clinics or Nigerian hospitals? How many of, we, how many of them go to the, the, the common market? Nothing. The former president, Olishiko of Asindor, came. And he spent about sixteen billion dollars for light electricity. We didn't see the light. Jonathan came, spent huge sum of money. Still in my area for the past three weeks, we have not seen with light. Then this government, during their campaign, my friend said he voted for them because they came and promised us heaven and earth. The only thing they did not promise us that they were going to bring back our forefathers have died. Now, they said, if by six months that they've not been able to provide light, that we should chase them out. Deceitfulness. Until they bring back moral value. Knowing that one day they will be asked to give, not only by man, by God. Then you begin from, changes start from, from the family begin to teach our children moral value that when you go there it's not for embezzlement because nigerians are wicked the politicians we elected they fight to kill not because of what they are going to achieve but what they are going to win. so we need to go back to it i think the presidential system is expensive ross in the in those days you don't talk about what to benefit you talk about what to deliver but today what is it Telling lies, deceiving people. But now one thing is, really, since the inception of this administration, we've heard of different projects. You know, some might not have been started by this administration, but they have succeeded in completing them, initiating new ones, continuing existing ones. Completing what? Completing what? We'll talk about the, the um, Abuja, Kaduna. It was line. started by Jonathan. I mentioned it that right. some it, were yeah, started but, by but, them. The is they continued some, and they have completed some. Continuity has not been the other some. Nigeria. Continuity has not been. But as the trend seems to change in except any except way, except otherwise, the, 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 during the time of, of passenger and the, this the, continuity. When this government came in place, 
remember, the Buhari administration, Buhari himself, started appreciating the level of um, works done by. Because if there was no continuity, but somebody that called his attention. Just How are you praising the, yeah, the man you condemn? And they started condemning all whatever Jonathan did. It's wrong. Do you know the major problem we have in Nigeria? This problem of esteeming self Sorry. above others. You see, much is being spent, but until we all come to the point where you realize that what is good for A is good for Z, like I mentioned, and they do that a lot in Japan, you will not get the buy-in of the people. Much was spent on Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. As we speak now, I submit myself to be challenged. Mm. Go to the departure hall of Nandia Zikwe downstairs. I think there are only just two switches to charge phones. I have pictures for the passengers that are traveling. The passengers will almost be quarreling. They have to go and get extension but because I'm a researcher. You will witness that in Detroit airport in the US. Right where you are sitting, you can connect your phone, charge your phone, you see train moving. You see, you are connected to civilization. And yet, how much did they spend? How much did China spend on the longest bridge that they constructed? So I think what I have seen in Nigeria is that the political arena is so heavily monetized that this money must be mobilized from somewhere. I have mentioned this money. The Minister of Mines collected $150 million from World Bank. Where is the intervention in that, uh, that sector of the economy today? You, you, we read about the $25 billion contract scam in NNPC, covered up $1.4 trillion for, for fuel importation subsidy that we heard has been rolled away. You see, and when we have been speaking about modular refineries, there can be refineries in all the states in Nigeria. We can move forward. The entire energy mix needed in the world are available in Nigeria. You talk about water, you talk about gas, you talk about solar, you talk about biomass. So why are we where we are? Okay. So there is just a group of oppressors oh. who make themselves comfortable. Their children are in trouble, they are flown abroad for instant attention. As we speak now, it is because Ebola is knocking on the door. And may God keep Ebola away from Nigeria. And the government is now interested in Juhesh to strike it. The minister promised, one of the ministers, that we should we will begin to uh, to the minimum wage. I'm not a civil servant, uh, by September. The minimum wage is not provided for. In, in this 2018 budget, budget. In the budget, lies. Why wouldn't they? So what are we talking about? Why so should they have to send varmints? My sister, do that? when you, you know, somebody said people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm. We need to care for people. And in the US, you are going to Washington in the morning. You're coming back in the evening. You see the government, a road without potholes, just because on record. That road is due for maintenance. They will remove the asphalt and relay it. Things in Nigeria, and please, I speak with all sincerity of intention and respect. The president will be the one to come and commission bus stop. <laughs> I mean, and the whole the, the government was shut down. Flyovers. And flyovers. I think we need to move beyond all Perhaps this. Perhaps there was already a plan for him to visit. And so why? The why? Why? Was why? The only thing now, is to work sixty-four on million stuff. naira to upgrade websites, government websites. So we just have this money. I have told Nigerians this morning. Our debt profile, as we speak now. It's over 21 trillion naira. Some points are picked from you both this morning regarding infrastructure development that we've got to be sincere with ourselves, that we've got to be committed to develop Nigeria. I must sincerely appreciate you both for being with me in the studio today. I have been speaking with Jude Ologmo, legal practitioner and PR expert, as well as Chinedum Obioha, uh, social commentator. Thank you very much for your time today. It's a pleasure once again. Very much. God bless Nigeria.
Well, that's been it on our discussion. Thank you very much for staying through. So what can you do to make the system better? What can I do to make Nigeria better? Let's pull resources together, urgent governments to do more so we can have a better society. Thank you for being part of the conversation. Let's continue on social media. Have a very splendid day. God bless Nigeria. Thank you.